how to speak English fluently like American speakers in just one month. Hi everyone! Do you believe that we can speak English fluently like an American speaker in just a month with this video? Is it possible or not? Today, I will instruct you on how to speak English like an American in one month with 24 topics of using call occasions and idioms in conversations. Method It would be better if you follow the natural process of learning any language. Listening, speaking, reading, writing. Now I will show you three steps to speak like an American. Step one, listening and reading. Listen to three or four times to the conversation in the video. Then you had better take note of the collocations, idioms, or phrases bold in dialogues. Step 2. Speaking Practice speaking what you have learned in the video by imitating the method. Step 3. Writing After practicing, try to rewrite the topics in conversations in your own way by using the phrases and collocations learned. Let's get started. Step 1. Listening to conversations. What's wrong? What's wrong, Eric? I'm really nervous. I'm always this way on the first day of school. You're not the only one. It's hard for me, too. I'm glad we're taking this class together. Do you know anything about the teacher? Uh-huh, a little. Someone told me she gives a lot of homework and you have to talk a lot in class. Oh no! I'm afraid of talking in front of a lot of people. Oh, don't worry. Everyone's afraid at the beginning, but after you get to know the people and make friends. It doesn't get better for me. I'm shy. I have trouble looking at people when I talk and my hands shake. Look, the teacher's here. Let's talk after class. Who's this? Hello. Hi, Sarah. Who's this? It's Alex. Oh, hi, Alex. This is Anna. Hold on a minute and I'll get Sarah. Sarah, it's for you. I'll be right there. Alex, hi. Hi, Sarah. Want to go to the movies Friday night? I'm really sorry, but I can't make it Friday night. Saturday? How about Saturday? Sure. Why don't I pick you up at 7 o'clock? That sounds great! Oh, Alex, I'm sorry. My parents are calling me for dinner and I have to get off. See you Saturday! Great! See you! Bye! Let's go away for the weekend! 
you know we have a three-day weekend next month. Do you want to go away? That's a great idea. Where do you want to go? To the beach. The beach in the winter? We don't have to go swimming. We can take walks on the beach. But what else can we do? Oh, there's plenty of things to do. We can read, go to the movies. I need to relax, don't you? I sure do. You're right. The beach is a good idea, and it won't be crowded. Do you think we need to make a reservation anywhere? No, I don't think so. There are lots of places to stay, and they will be cheaper now than they are in the summer. Wake up! Wake up, Tom. Don't you have to go to the airport? Yeah, I'll get up in five minutes. I don't want to get out of bed. It's so early. Well, I'm going back to sleep. I hope you won't miss your plane. Have a good trip. Thanks. Oh, why did I go to bed so late last night? It's so hard to get up, and it's so cold and dark. But I need to get up now and take a shower. What time is it? Six o'clock? Oh no, I'm late. I don't have time for a shower. I have to get dressed and get to the airport right away. Are you ready to order? Oh, it's so nice to eat out and have time together. What a great birthday present. I'm glad you like it. I'm always happy to treat you to lunch. And I was thinking, you know, we never really have time to just sit and talk. I know, and now we have two hours. And this is a really nice place. Yeah, I come here once in a while. So, what are you going to have? Um, I'm not sure yet, but you order whatever you want. It's your birthday. Whatever I want? Okay. But please don't sing happy birthday when we have dessert. If you do, I'll get under the table. You'll never change. Always so shy. Well, that's me. Anyway, I think I'll have the chicken Caesar salad. What are you going to have? The salad sounds good, but I'm going to have soup too because I'm really hungry. My leg is killing me. My leg is killing me. What happened? I was coming down the stairs too fast and I fell down. Do you think your leg is broken? I don't know, but it hurts a lot. Maybe you need to go to the emergency room. No, let's wait a few minutes and see if it gets better. Okay, but can I get you anything? Hmm, maybe some ice. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, here, can you move your leg? I think so. But look, it's getting swollen. Listen, Mike, I'm calling an ambulance right away. Stay put, 
and don't move. Shopping for jeans. Can I help you? Thanks, we're just looking. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. What do you think of these jeans? They're really nice. How much are they? Hmm, there's no price tag. Where's the salesperson? I'm going to ask her. Oh, there she is. Excuse me, how much are these jeans? I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, let's see. They were $29, but I think today they're 30% off. Yes, that's right. They're about $20. That's a good price for these jeans. Can I try them on? Sure, the fitting rooms are right over there. Just go on in. Thanks a lot. Lynn, how do they look? Oh, Jim, they're too big. I'll get you a smaller size. Wait a minute. Here, try these. I think these are better. How do they look? They're perfect. Oh, they look very nice on you. Great. I'll take them. Who's cooking tonight? Hello. Honey, it's me. Where are you? At the station. I missed my train, so I'm going to be late. Oh, that's too bad. Will you get back in time to pick up the kids? I don't think so. Can you get them? No problem. Make sure they start their homework. Don't worry. What time do you think you'll be home? Probably in about an hour. How was your day? Well, I worked for a few hours at the computer, and then I got sleepy, so I took a nap. You took a nap? You're so lucky you work at home. I can't take a nap in the office, you know. But I also did the laundry and the dishes. You can't do those things in the office. Well, that's true. Hey! What's for dinner? Chicken. It'll be ready when you get home. I can't wait. I love your chicken. And I love you. See you around 6.30. I hope so. See ya. Getting cold feet. Can you believe it, Jenna? Your wedding is in two weeks. I know. What's wrong? Well, I think I'm getting cold feet. Oh, don't worry. That's normal. That's how I felt before I married Tim. But everything will be fine. You and Rick are really great together. I know, but maybe we should wait. We can't even afford to buy furniture. Oh, so it's money that's making you have second thoughts. But deep down, you really want to get married. You're right. I really do. I'm dying to marry Rick. Hey, Rick, what's wrong? I don't know. I just hope I'm ready to get married. Uh-oh, are you getting cold feet? I guess you could say that. I'm about to change my life for good, so I'm kinda nervous. Okay, then call off the wedding. But I'm dying to marry Jana. 
and she's dying to marry you. So why don't you just take a deep breath and calm down, pulling an all-nighter. Annette, is everything okay? You look really tired. It's that obvious? Well, you're right. I am tired. Last night, I pulled an all-nighter writing a paper for my psych class. Did you finish it? Yeah, and just in the nick of time. I emailed it to my professor five minutes before the deadline. Well, that was close. Are you going home now? No, I have to hurry to my history class. See you later. I'm really in hot water. My history teacher gave us a surprise quiz, and I couldn't remember anything. My mind went totally blank. I didn't even want to hand in my quiz because I knew everything was wrong. Oh, I can't believe this. I'm going to get an F on a test. That happened to me once, but it wasn't a surprise quiz. I just got the date of the test wrong, so I didn't study. I took the test cold and didn't do well. What grade did you get? I think I got a C. Well, at least a C is passing. I'm going to get an F. Listen, Annette, you need to take it easy. For all you know, you passed the quiz. So why don't you go home and take a nap? That's a good idea, but I have another class at two and we're going to have a test. I need to go to the library and hit the books. What a day you're having! You can say that again. Are we couch potatoes? Hi guys, come on in. Thanks, it's so good to see you. And here, we brought some popcorn. Oh, you're so thoughtful. What a great idea. Here, let me take your coats. And come in and make yourselves comfortable. I'm so glad we can finally get together. So are we. It's been such a long time. So tell me, what movies are we going to see tonight? Well, we have two very old and famous ones. A comedy and a murder mystery. Want to guess what they are? Surprise us. But can we see the comedy first? I'm in the mood for something funny after a hard week at work. Well, that makes two of us. I don't feel like watching anything serious. Hey, you know, I heard that it's healthy to laugh. I heard that too. There was something on TV about that. Comedians weren't performing in hospitals. Yeah, I saw that. It was really interesting. That reminds me. Yesterday, my sister told me that Michael and I are couch potatoes because we watch so much TV. But do you think we're couch potatoes if we watch good shows? Come on, Susan. It doesn't matter what we watch. It's true that we spend a lot of time sitting on the couch and watching show after show. Listen, there's no need to worry about being a couch potato tonight. We all need to relax, so let's watch a movie. The comedy first. 
after watching two movies. Well, it's getting late, and we should be going. You two know how to pick good movies. Both were great. Thank you. Our pleasure. And it was really great seeing you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Next time, come over to our place and we'll surprise you with a couple of great classics. Sounds good. See you guys. Get home safe and sound. A really big blackout. Dave! Finally! I'm so glad you called. Where were you? Sorry, honey. I just checked my messages. It was a hard day. You know I'm in charge of a lot of these meetings. Are the lights still out? They sure are. And not just the lights. Everything is out. Except my cell phone and it won't stay charged for long. Do you have any idea how big this blackout is? No, but I'm getting online to find out right now. Wow, Carla, you should see the map. It looks like the power is out in about five states. Does it say when they think it'll come back on? Let's see. It says here that it might not come back on until tomorrow. Oh, no. I'm sorry I'm not there with you and Maggie. Me too. I'm working by candlelight, and it's very romantic. How can you work without electricity? Well, my laptop is still charged. I think I have about one more hour to work. And what are you working on? A report that's due tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I'm sure your boss doesn't expect you to work in the dark. I know, but it's something to do. Maggie's sound asleep. I miss you both. I can't wait till you get home. Well, just two more days. And the chances are the blackout will be over by then. I sure hope so. If it isn't, I'll go out of my mind. Workaholic Mom Thanks for your invitation, honey but I'll have to take a rain check. But mom, it's your birthday. I know, I know, but I'm swamped with work. It won't make a difference if we go next week. Yes, it will. It won't be your birthday next week. I want to take you out to dinner on your birthday, not after. Well, you know I'd love to take you up on your invitation, but... But what? Okay, I'll work late tonight and tomorrow night and get this project over with, and that way I'll be free Thursday night. Oh, thanks, Mom. Wow, I didn't know it would be so hard to talk you into going out and celebrating. Well, you know me. I have so much responsibility now that I have this new position. I know you're really busy, but you should make time to celebrate. After all, your birthday comes only once a year, right? Right. So tell me, where do you want to eat? I have two special places in mind, but I keep going back and forth. I'll decide tomorrow and make a reservation. It's going to be a surprise. Well, now, I'm really looking forward to Thursday. 
and there's going to be one more surprise. But I'm not going to tell you till we're through with dinner. Another surprise? Pat, tell me now. Are you really going to make me wait? Guess who? Guess who? Oh, I can't believe it. I know it's you, Peter. I haven't seen you in ages. How are you? Pretty good. How about you? Fine. Busy as always. You know me. I'm such a workaholic. Wow, it's really great to see you. I'd love to catch up on your news. Do you have time to sit down? Or were you on your way out? I was leaving, but I can join you for a few minutes. Great! So tell me, how's your family? Well, it keeps getting bigger. We have four kids now, all boys. Four boys? I bet they keep you busy. They sure do. The baby is only a month old, so Jenny's not working right now. And what's new with you and Jim? Believe it or not, he's home with the kids. You're kidding. No, I'm not. He talked to his boss about working at home, and it turned out that his boss thought it was a good idea. I love it because Jim does all the shopping and cleaning, and we save money on childcare. It sounds too good to be true. Hmm, maybe that's something we should think about doing down the road. I'm sure Jenny would love that. But with four kids, I don't know if you'd have time to get any work done. Good point. Yikes! It's after one. I have to go and spend the rest of the day in meetings. I'm really glad I ran into you, Laura. Tell Jim I said hi and that I'll call you soon so we can all have dinner. Great idea. And say hi to Jenny and the kids. See you. Don't throw it away. Recycle. Hold it, Kathy. What in the world are you doing? I can't believe my eyes. What's the problem? Well, don't you recycle. How can you throw glass away? Michael, I was only trying to help. I know, I know. But I'm really surprised, Kathy. I thought you cared about the environment and... I do care, but there's no place to recycle bottles here and I wanted to help clean up. You make me feel so guilty. I'm sorry. I did go a little crazy. It's just that, recently, I did some research on pollution and found out that we're running out of places to put our garbage. Listen, you two. Why don't we all go through these bags and take the bottles out? I'll take them home and recycle them. Oh, Lee, you don't have to take them all. Why don't we each take a few? Yeah, good idea, Mike. Well, let's get started so we can all go home. Time to say goodbye. Okay, we have a few more people to ask. Carmen? What are you doing over the break? Well, my best friend will be here for two weeks, and I'm going to show her around. I can't wait to see her. Well, that sounds really nice. There's so much to do around here. I'm sure you'll have a great time. And Danny, what about you? I don't have anything planned. Really? 
Well, I was going to go back home, but it didn't work out. What happened? I didn't get my tickets early enough, and now the prices are really high. That's happened to me before. To get a good price, you really need to get your ticket in advance. I know, but I think I'm better off staying here anyways, so I can work more on my English. Wow, that's music to my ears. Good for you, Danny. And now, May, what are you going to do over the break? Nothing much. I have to work. I have a part time job. Well, at least you won't have any homework for a while. Do you have any plans for the break? Uh huh. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to take it easy. Take walks, go to the movies, visit friends, read. Oh, wow. Look at the time. It's time to go. And I hate to say goodbye. I hope you all got a lot out of our class and that you'll keep in touch. Have a great break, and above all, don't forget to speak English. At a party. What's eating you? What do you mean? I'm fine. No, you aren't. Come on. Whatever it is, get it off your chest. Well, see that woman over there? Her name's Elizabeth. I've been trying to find a way to meet her for months, and now here she is. But I don't have the guts to walk over there. Come on, Bill. This is your chance. Just give it a shot. What do you have to lose? She wouldn't be caught dead with me. Why do you say that? Oh, let's just skip it, okay? I don't know why I even told you. How do you know her, anyway? We work in the same building. Well, I think you should just bite the bullet. Go over there and start a conversation. Maybe later. Why put it off? Who knows? You two might hit it off. That'll be the day. Well, why are you so negative all of a sudden? I've never seen you like this. Maybe you're right. I should just take the initiative and walk over there. But what should I say? Now you're talking. Just introduce yourself and start talking about the party. Or mention that you've seen her at work. She's bound to recognize you, too. Well, maybe. Oh, you're probably right. If I pass up this chance, I'll never forgive myself. Well, here I go. Wish me luck. Kids' behavior in public. Yikes! What happened? I can't believe it. All of a sudden, a kid just ran in front of that waitress and she almost dropped her tray. What? Yeah, look! The parents are just sitting there while their kids is totally out of control. What? I can't hear you. It's so noisy in here. I said his parents aren't paying any attention to him at all. I don't think they have a clue that he's causing trouble. 
Well, this is just what we need after going through all the trouble of getting a babysitter. I thought we came here to eat in peace for once. Maybe we should go somewhere else. It's taking forever to get our food anyway. That's not a bad idea. Uh-oh, it's too late. Our food's coming. Sorry for the wait. That's okay. You're really busy tonight. I saw what just happened with that kid. You have a pretty dangerous job. Yeah, unfortunately, not all parents keep their kids under control. But I guess that's just part of the job. Well, we'd never put up with that kind of behavior from our kids. I have nothing against taking kids to restaurants, but the bottom line is that kids need to learn how to behave, especially in public. Oh look, here comes the manager. I think he's going to talk to them. I wonder if he's going to ask them to leave. In class. Mmm. This coffee is really strong. I like it that way. So do I. All during my class, I was thinking about coming here and could almost taste the coffee. Sounds like it wasn't too exciting. I was bored to death. I'm in that class only because it's a requirement, so I just have to stick it out. The problem is, the professor doesn't know how to spark our interest. She just walks in and lectures. There's no discussion. What a drag. Don't people ask questions? Oh, yeah, once in a blue moon. But I always see an awful lot of people doodling. And I can tell their minds are wandering. Do you have any classes like that? I only have one big lecture class. World history. And the professor's the best. It's so interesting. I'm always on the edge of my seat. And when we have discussions, the room is filled with electricity. I'm jealous. Too bad I already took history. You know, one day it dawned on me that I was lucky to be in her class because I found myself thinking a lot about what she said. Did you ever have a teacher like that? I'd have to think about it. I don't know. You should come with me to class sometime, just to see what I mean. Sounds like you're in love with her, Steve. Very funny. She could be my grandmother. Anyway, I guess what it really comes down to is her enthusiasm for the subject. She just loves history. I remember at the beginning of this semester, I was fooling around a lot and not taking anything in school very seriously. I bombed the first history class, but then I buckled down because I started really enjoying school, especially her class. You've really got me curious about this teacher. I think I'll take you up on your idea to visit your class. When does it meet? On the streets. Hello, young man. What brings you to this neck of the woods? Actually, I was wondering if I could interview you from my newspaper. Me? 
About what? Well, we're doing a series of articles on the homeless, and I... And you want to know what happened to me, what I live on, what it's like to live from hand to mouth. Uh, yeah, I do want to know. Would you be willing to tell me your story? You got about three hours. Whatever we need. Well then, go ahead and sit down. Thanks. Um, let's see. Well, first I'd like to ask you. No questions, just listen. You think I grew up poor, don't you? That I don't have an education. But you're dead wrong. I have a college degree. I worked for a big company. My parents would turn over in their graves if they could see me now. But how? I said no questions. Just sit and listen. In the beginning, I got up at 5 a.m. every day and was at work by 7. And I stayed at the office till 8 in the evening. 13 hours! That was the only way I could keep up with all the work. It just never let up. I never saw my family very much because when I got home, I usually went straight to bed. Well, I guess I was doing a pretty good job because I kept moving up the ladder. I became a manager and got more money, but I also had to work even more hours and weekends, too. You can imagine that my wife never stopped complaining. She told me I was getting burned out and had no time for a life. That must have been really hard to hear. Yeah, my marriage was at stake, so I went to my boss and asked for a vacation. He told me to wait three more months. He needed me there, so nothing changed. Day in and day out, I worked and worked. Eventually, my wife left. And guess what? The company closed down a year later. The economy was bad, and I couldn't find another job. Over time, I lost everything. Hey, how many hours do you work a day? Uh, too many, I'm sure. I just hope you know what you're doing. Things could change for you, you know. You could start over. After all, you're educated. That's wishful thinking, young man. Winning the lottery. What's gotten into Michael? What's he doing? I haven't the slightest idea. Look, he's coming over to us. And these are for you. What's the occasion? You haven't heard? I won the lottery yesterday. Ten million dollars! Ten million dollars? Come on, that's unheard of. Are you sure? Beyond the shadow of a doubt. Six, twelve, twenty-two, twenty-four, and 28. I got every number. 
And it was the first time I ever bought a lottery ticket. Beginner's luck, I guess. How do you feel? I'm in shock, to say the least. This is really all beyond my comprehension. It hasn't sunk in yet. Maybe it never will. Well, I've got to hand it to you. Sure look calm. If I were in your shoes, I don't think I'd be able to stand still, let alone buy presents for people and have conversations with them. I'm not so calm. I really have no idea what's in store for me. You know, right now, my whole life's up in the air. I'm worried about making the most of this. I don't want all that money to go down the drain. I'm going to need some time to think. Are you going to quit your job? I can't say yet, but I won't rule it out. Well, you are right not to make any quick decisions. And, you know, you should be on the lookout for people who want to take advantage of you. I know. I plan to be very, very careful. Well, no matter what you do, with ten million dollars, you've got it made. Stuck in the elevator. Oh no! This can't be happening. Hmm. Well, that certainly happened out of the blue. I wonder what's going on. I'm going to ring the alarm. This is the last straw. I told them weeks ago to check this elevator. I would have been better off taking the stairs. Do you mean this has happened before? It sure has. It was a few weeks ago, but I wasn't in the elevator. Oh, if I'm cooped up in here really long, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm already at the end of my rope. Well, for crying out loud, young man, don't lose your head. Just calm down, and I'm sure they'll get this thing started again as soon as they can. You know, I knocked myself out to be on time for my meeting, and now look. Complaining isn't going to help. We'll just have to make do here and be thankful that we have some light and some company. Actually, you're right. I'm glad I'm not alone in here, or I'd be climbing the walls. So, you see, it could be a lot worse. Just please do me a favor and keep a level head. Let's just sit tight and wait for help. How can you be so calm? It sounds like you've been stuck in elevators before. Well, the truth is, this is my first time. But why should I panic? What good would it do? I don't want to dwell on things that scare me. I'd rather pass the time in here pleasantly. How would that ever be possible? Hmm, we could tell each other our life stories. Who knows, we might even come through this as friends. Huh? We can help each other out by doing something that'll distract us. Why don't you just sit down and tell me about yourself? Violence in the media. So, what do you think? Well, 
It's nothing to write home about. You must be kidding. Why do you say that? I think it's the best movie I've seen in years. With all that violence? It wasn't so violent. It certainly was. There was blood in practically every scene, and sometimes the violence had no bearing on the story. It was just put in for audiences who liked to see blood. I don't know how they can get away with showing so much detail. Well, from my standpoint, there was a real anti violence message in the movie. They showed how all that violence ended in tragedy. But that's no excuse for being so graphic. Why did they have so many scenes with all that suffering? Because it was an important part of the story. Sorry, but that argument just doesn't hold water. You could cut some of those scenes out and still have your story. And as far as sending an anti violence message, you can do that without making the audiences sick. Now you're just blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Am I? Look at the crime statistics. Listen, you know this subject is a bone of contention between us. We've had heated arguments about this kind of thing before. Yes, too many. I sure hope that someday I'll get through to you. All I know is I got my money's worth tonight. Well, I'll agree that this story was engrossing, but all that blood and violence drives me up the wall. Look, now we're back where we started. Let's just agree to disagree and go get a cup of coffee. Changing time zones. Dad, what time is it? Four. Four? Who knows what time that is for me? Boy, I have terrible jet lag. I can't keep my eyes open. Well, I'm not going to let you sleep in the middle of the afternoon. Let's take a walk, and you can tell me about your trip. I'm sorry, Daddy, but I'm too wiped out. I think I'll stretch out and take a little nap. Uh uh, no naps. You know if you go to sleep now, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night. Come on, let's take a little walk around the block. Maybe you'll get a second wind. I sure hope so. I missed you and Mom a lot. A year is a long time. We missed you too, honey. But we know that studying in another country was good for you. Well, I sure had my ups and downs. Sometimes I even thought about coming home early. But I was determined to stick it out. And I'm glad you did. But you didn't tell us you were having problems. What was so hard for you over there? Oh, I don't think I can scratch the surface.